All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another edition of Quick Question Friday, where I take a real question from a real Etsy seller and answer it to give you guys some gold nuggets, to give you strategies, uh, tips, and feedback to start, build, or grow your Etsy and handmade business. Let's dive in to today's episode. All right, so I'm brand new and don't even have an Etsy shop yet. My main product is upcycled glass garden flowers. Cool. Um, expensive to ship, so concerning. Um, so it's concerning. Uh, what are some best practices? So yeah, it's probably, they probably weigh a lot, I'm assuming. So that's why it's probably more expensive to ship, not to mention you have to package them because they're going to be really delicate. Um, so, I mean, you really you're going to have to figure out your process when you're shipping. Uh, you know, it is going to be a cost. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to offer free shipping. You know, you can still charge for, for the cost and people are going to expect that with fragile stuff. First of all, you need to buy your packing stuff in bulk, whether you do it on Amazon or another platform. Um, so you save money on your packaging supplies and you're, you're going to work that out. The more that you buy and figure out whether the, whether the cheapest places and the best places to buy your packing stuff from, and then you're just going to set up your shipping rates accordingly. You can get estimates from USPS.com or, or even um, in Etsy. They can calculate shipping for you. And if you're selling a de delicate item, you know, a lot of people get stuck on thinking they have to offer, offer free shipping. I mean, you don't have to as long as your shipping is reasonable, um, you know, especially for delicate stuff. I think it's more than fair to, to ask the buyer to pay some or, or all the costs for shipping. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot, there's people that sell furniture. Um, you know, if you, there's, there's people that sell a lot of heavy stuff, sculptures, all kinds of heavy stuff on Etsy. So you can require the, the buyer to pay for shipping, or you can increase the product price to account for some of the shipping as well. Uh, the thing about Etsy is you don't have to always sell stuff for the cheapest. That's another thing that's pretty, pretty cool about selling on Etsy is people don't come there to buy stuff that, the cheapest stuff out there. They come to buy original, you know, handmade goods. Some people come to buy it cheap, but I think the majority of people that uh, shop on Etsy are looking for just original handmade, uh, high quality stuff. So they're willing to pay more. Now you don't want to gouge them, but you got to find a happy medium in there. You don't want to charge too low. You don't want to charge too, too high. And that accounts for shipping as well. Um, but that is a concern, but once you have it set up and figured out your weights, you can set up shipping profiles for your weights, different weights of the items. So it's saved in there. Uh, so you don't have to figure it out for each, uh, each time someone buys something, it's already figured out. You can save it as a shipping profile and apply it to a bulk of listings. If you want, if you sell, um, similar items or similar batches or similar categories of items to ship it. So I wouldn't worry as much uh, about shipping, uh, you know, that's something that you, it's part of the process that you can get, uh, figured out. So, all right. Is there a minimum shipping price regardless of the number of items sold? I understand shipping through Etsy is first class shipping only. No, you can set your shipping prices for whatever you want, depending on what you're selling. So first class is an option, which is a nice option because it's business class. So it's cheaper but you can only you can only ship stuff first class if it's less than a pound. If it's more than a pound, you have no you have no other alternative other than to ship it priority mail. So you would set your shipping profiles up to account for that. Now, if you're if you're if your item's less than a pound, you're gonna offer first class just because it's cheaper, and more times than not, it's just as fast or it's within a day of priority mail because um, normally. You know, if you ship a, a item that's like 10 ounces, it'll cost you maybe 350, depending on where it's out, where you're shipping it to. If you do that same 10 ounce item priority, it's going to cost you probably eight bucks, 850, something like that. So you're doubling your cost. So wherever possible, ship it first class. And like I said, from my experience, it's it's just as fast as priority. Um, but yeah, you would set that up in your shipping profile, um, as, as an option, depending on the weight. Now, if your stuff is more than a pound, then you're going to start at priority mail and that's where you're going to set your shipping prices at. Now, one thing you can do if you don't want to necessarily offer free shipping, um, which is fine. You can offer, like, like I said, people are fine paying shipping as long as you're not gouging them. So if it costs you $8 to ship something priority mail, um, 
maybe you want to charge, uh, maybe you want to charge them like seven bucks or six bucks. So you're, you're paying a little bit of the shipping costs. It's cutting into your margins a little bit, but it's still better than, than free shipping. Um, or you can set it right at the cost, you know, right at eight bucks. Uh, and then it may vary just a little bit. So where people have a problem and you, you see this a lot of times on like eBay and stuff like that, where, um, you know, it, you, you buy an item, you know, it costs probably eight bucks to ship it priority. And they're, they want to charge you like 15 bucks and they're kind of playing with the, you know, the pricing stuff. Cause there's enough, there's nothing worse than when you get to check out, you, you feel like you're getting a good deal and then they gouge you on shipping. And you're like, Oh man, that's, that's why it's so cheap. So you don't want to, you don't really want to pull that with your customers uh, as much as possible. Um, so it, it really depends how you want to set that up. There's different ways of, of setting up shipping and, and uh, things for your products, depending on, on what you're selling. Um, you can also offer uh, shipping upgrades in the profiles as well, which is always a good idea from a customer service standpoint. Um, you can offer expedited shipping options, which is nice, especially this time of year when everyone's waiting to, uh, to the last minute to get, find their Christmas stuff. Uh, so, you, you know, wait until the week before to hurry up and find their stuff. So then they got to, uh, buy, uh, buy their stuff and expedite the shipping and pay double the, the product, pr uh, cost to get their stuff express shipped. <laughs> so that always happens. Um, I definitely see that every year where people are freaking out trying to get their stuff late. All right, guys, that's all for today's episode. Hopefully that uh, question and answer helped you out, uh, gave you some strategies, some tips that you can use to implement in your own uh, Etsy and handmade business to start, build, and grow and get to the next level. Uh, if you guys want your questions answered, you guys want support, help, uh, feedback, whatever you need to start, build, and grow your business, uh, you can dump into the Handmade and Beyond community. Uh, get it free. You can get a free 30-day trial so you can test drive everything, get full access. Um, if you go to www.handmadeandbeyond.com front slash HB free trial. Hope to see you guys in there soon. Until next week, have an awesome rest of your day.